Hey everybody, welcome back to Friday Art Class with me, Adrian Margie. Since our last classes before Easter, you have been sending me through lots of photographs of your own incredible work and your interpretations of my paintings. So good to see. They've given me a real boost and really helped me through lockdown and I hope they've helped you through lockdown as well. With school holidays just around the corner, I wanted to reach out to you with another couple of lessons before you down tools for summer. In today's lesson, we're going to be exploring my more traditional style, which uses naturalistic colouring and aspects of impressionism to capture our beautiful landscape. Uh, today, we're going to look at Erigal, one of my favourite places to paint, and a place that I haven't been able to go to over the past few months. Erigal is a 751 metre high mountain in County Donegal. It's the tallest peak in Donegal, and it's thought to be one of Ireland's most iconic mountains. It's known for the pinkish glow of its quartzite stone in the setting sun, and it's known for um, its ever-changing shape, depending which angle you look at it from. In today's lesson, we're going to be painting Mount Erigal from Dunlui in the Guidor uh, area of Donegal. We're going to be looking across Dunlui Loch towards the peak of Mount Erigal in the distance. As usual, we're going to start by dividing the canvas up into thirds, both vertically and horizontally. For the top third, we'll be dedicated to the sky. The middle third will house the peak of Mount Erigal and the surrounding hills. And then the bottom third is going to feature the waters of, of Dunlui Loch and the surrounding grasses and reeds. So we start with the sloping hills around Mount Erigal. Then we add in that distinctive shape of Mount Erigal itself. And the other hills. The steep mountain um, sweeps down to the waters of the Louis Loch and also the, the lower lying, the flat land here. Uh, it's very marshy and has some coniferous trees. So you can see there you've got the sky, the mountains, and now we're going to have the water and uh, framed really by the foreground of this sort of scrubland. So it's a very simple sketch at this stage mountain, hills, water, and foreground scrubland. In your sketch, as usual, take account of the contours of the land, both the mountain itself and the, and the surrounding fields and hills. So just a few little suggestions of the contours of the land, just to guide you whenever you're painting. As I said in the previous classes, there's not a lot of point of putting in extremely detailed sketch work because you're going to be painting over that and you're not going to be able to see it anyway. Um, so your sketch should be quite loose, quite rough, and just act as a guide. Now, in this lower lying piece of land here, um, there's some fir trees which we're going to uh, sketch in. Just the shape of the fir trees. Very loosely. And whenever we come to painting, we're going to add in the reflections of those trees and of my derigal in the still water. And now it's time to start painting. So today I'm going to be working in my more traditional impressionistic style. Uh, and impressionists used um, short, thick strokes of paint uh, to capture the essence of a subject as opposed to the fine detail of it. Um, and for me, that's really how I enjoy portraying landscape. Impressionists apply colours side by side, so there's very little mixing. And when you apply the colours side by side, they do appear more vivid. Uh, there's a lot of uh, exploration of natural light in impressionistic work and there's a sense of, uh, of movement that comes with that because the light, of course, is ever-changing. For me, impressionism, it's, 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 really, it's really about spontaneity. It's about capturing your immediate impression of a scene on canvas. And building on that idea of spontaneity and, and capturing movement and light, I really enjoy painting landscapes with my fingertips and the palm of my hand. Literally just mixing the paint up on the palette with my fingertips and applying it in strokes with my fingertips straight onto the canvas. It really does create a sense of movement in the piece. So today I'm going to ask you to put your brushes away and don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. Uh, it's really good to experiment with different ways of working, different ways of making marks on your page. 
Uh, you might like this, you might not, uh, but you never know what you will discover. So I want to create quite a moody landscape. And we're going to start with the sky. Um, in Donegal, as you know, you can have all four seasons in one day. And uh, I want to create the sky with cloud, maybe a thread of rain, but also with chinks of light coming through. Um, so we're going to start mix up some white paint with a little bit of yellow ochre. Again, using your fingertips. And this is the colour that we're going to add into the horizon. Where the land, the mountains, meet the sky. So don't be afraid to work quickly here. Just strokes of paint. Creating that sense of movement and sense of changing light that I was talking about earlier right from the get-go. I'm now going to mix up some ultramarine blue with burnt umber, that's brown. And I'm going to apply this darker colour along the top of the sky. Again, just using my fingertip. quite a thick layer of paint along the top and then I'm going to use just the side of my hand to, uh, to mix it a little. You can see that effect adding a little bit more of white in here to show the chinks of light coming through. Just using the side of my hand. That creates quite a good base for the sky. Uh, on top of that, you can add in some more sort of cloud formations. Those heavy clouds that threaten rain. Just mixing up the burnt umber with the ultramarine blue. I hope you can see the moodiness in the image already. And what you see in the sky will then be reflected in the landscape. Adding a little bit of white with yellow ochre to reveal the clouds. I'll give you a close-up on that. Just running your finger along the top. Really quite an effective way 
to capture the, the changing light. mixing up a little bit of light grey so that will involve getting your ultramarine blue, brown and quite a lot of white to help the dark sky meet the light of the horizon line this creates that sense of a huge sky So there we have the bases of the sky, now we're going to move on and add in the hills and the mountain beneath. So when adding in the distinctive shape of Erigo itself and the surrounding hills, um, I would mix up quite a dark colour mixture of ultramarine blue and brown again and use that to create almost like an outline or a guide for yourself in terms of the, the, sh the actual outline, shape of the mountain and the contours. See what I mean about your sketch quickly disappearing. Um, I like to think of this undercoat of ultramarine and blue um, as almost like the new sketch that you use to guide the rest of your painting by. So you can see there the outline of Erigo. Now we're going to add in the surrounding hills. So using your fingers to really show the contours of the hills, the sloping land like this. And also then just to mark in the water's edge where the land meets um, Dundee Loch. And you can sort of see already you're, you're starting to get, um, even with this very limited amount of colour and paint, you're beginning to get an impression of the landscape, uh, an impression of the mountain. And it can be surprisingly quick. So that's really as much of a base as I want to do. I want to leave the water and the foreground as is. Uh, I want to concentrate on adding in more colours uh, into the mountain and the hills. I want to really introduce greys and ochres and browns uh, and moss colours and even some pinks um, of the quartzite uh, in Erigo um, to, to add a bit of warmth uh, to the piece. So uh, let, let's do that while this is still wet. It's quite important to try and keep mixing in um, and contrasting strokes of colour when the paint is still wet. Adding in some light blues here for highlights. Mixing up your white and blue. All 
all the time thinking about the contour of the land. Then mixing up some green and yellow ochre. Um, sort of think about the mountain, the, the grass and the moss that sort of creeps up the side of the mountain. So you want to kind of introduce that idea. When you look close up, you can sort of see all the different strokes and finger marks that go to make up the impression of the mountain from a distance. So when you're painting landscapes, typically the land as you come closer to the foreground is darker than the land that sits behind it. So in front of the mountain, you want to make this sloping ground darker than the mountain itself. So on top of this dark base colour, we're going to add in some strokes of yellow, umber and white just to show, uh, just to bring some highlights to the land and to emphasise the shapes and contours of the land. Adding in some green as well. Mixing the green with the uh, yellow ochre this time. Maybe some dashes of blue as well. Excuse all the noise in the background from my children as usual. Um, they haven't got any quieter during lockdown. <laughs> I think we need to add in some more hints of warmth to show the, the colour in this quartzite. So there you go, it's still known for. I think it really just lifts the piece. Do no harm to add a little bit into these hills as well. Just a touch. And to warm the hills, don't be afraid to add just a little bit of red, just a touch of red onto your fingertips. It really heats up the landscape. Maybe you start to look at the landscape, colours emerge that you might not uh, think are there, but that are actually there. Uh, adding in these dashes of uh, pinks and reds and purples just sort of uh, draws the attention to all of the beautiful heathers that grow in Donegal. Although this piece is going to be painted mostly with the fingertips, sometimes I use a palette knife just to etch into the wet paint just to emphasise some of the contours in the land. And as I say, you do this when the paint is still as wet as possible. Um, so the piece is progressing. Now I want to focus a little on the water. The water in this piece is going to be very still and it's going to reflect the beautiful colours from the landscape around it and the colours from the sky. So when painting still water and reflections, it's really a matter of getting to grips with mixing your vertical and horizontal strokes. So you start off by applying the vertical strokes of paint. In this case, we're wanting to uh, re reflect the mountain in the water. So the water is going to be lighter than the mountain 
it's going to be this mix of white and yellow ochre. Just um, hopefully you can see that okay. Just these strong vertical strokes of white and yellow ochre. This is going to be the base of the water. And apply it quite quite thickly really. This colour reflects the um, the colour in the horizon of the sky. And don't be afraid if it spills over into where the foreground should be, because that's all going to be covered over in a moment anyway, whenever you go to paint the foreground. So mixing up some more burnt umber, ultramarine blue, and a little bit of magenta, like a purple colour. I'm going to add that into the, the horizon colour because the sky obviously has lots of moody greys and blues in it as well. You want to kind of capture that. And a tip for you. Um, near the water's edge I want that to be really quite dark because you're also going to be reflecting the land where it meets the water all the time you're creating the impression you're creating the impression of this wild landscape a landscape that's ever changing with with light. So the same thing over here. I want to capture that land, the reflection of this land. Mixing up more of your ultramarine blue and burnt umber, you want to then capture the reflection of Mount Erigel itself. So remember, the mountain was a little lighter than the land in front of it, so you want its reflection to be a little bit lighter as well. So maybe add in some white to the mix. Capture the shape of the mountain, obviously. That iconic shape, it's so well known. Reflection also gives you the opportunity to reintroduce some of those colours, to pick out some of the colours in the land that you had added, like some of those purple tones. Some of the uh, pink tones and uh, those yellow ochres. Some sort of mothy tones. And on top of those colours, we're going to add in some strokes of white. Okay. The strokes of white just suggest light and helps to uh, blend the colours a little and give a certain consistency to the image and use that white all through the reflection to give a sense of continuity. White's very important here as this knot wraps around the base of the mountain. Now we're going to um, use horizontal strokes to, to mix the paint and to create that sense of still water. Okay, I think we've got enough white paint. Okay, so just dragging the finger across the canvas, creating that 
sense of the light hitting the water, a sense of stillness, a sense of calm. But adding to the moodiness of the image overall. So you can see that starting to take shape. I'm going to take the knife again and just create a few horizontal lines because remember, the water is flat. And there's another artist once said to me, water doesn't run up a hill. So <laughs> you want your, your water to look flat. Okay, now the next step is to work on the foreground here, which will really frame the painting. It's going to frame the view of the mountain. Um, and just like this land is darker than the mountain behind it, the land in the foreground is going to be the darkest of all. Okay, uh, if you've been up around Dundee, you'll know that this is all very marshy sort of scrubland with lots of reeds and sticks and twigs and moss. So that's the kind of the look that we're going to be going for. And that's the kind of the colours that we're going to be going for as well. Lots again, lots of browns and ochres and greens. So again, mixing up those uh, browns and ultramarine blue. Using the fingertips to really create the shape again on the contour of the foreground here. Working in this style, as I said before, it's really spontaneous, it's, it's really immediate. And working with your hands directly onto the canvas, it's so direct, it's really enjoyable. Um, so these colours act as sort of a base colour for the foreground, which, and then we're going to apply greens and ochres and highlights uh, on, on top of that, and also dashes of reds. I see there's dogwood and things. That, that appears in this area of scrubland too. Again, I'm going to use the palette knife now just to create the impression of some of the grasses and reeds. So, very quick movement, just scraping the brush etching into the paint. Just using the side of the knife. So as you can see, the piece has progressed quite well. We just now need to add in some details, like uh, some fir trees here on the, on the flatter piece of ground. Uh, I'm also going to use the palette knife, um, the, the edge of the palette knife, to define the water's edge, uh, and, and also maybe to define some of the contours of the land there as well. So when it comes to mixing up the colour for the coniferous trees, 
Um, you know, it's that evergreen color, um, quite a lot of blue uh, in the mix, so lots of blue and green. And remember, you're just creating the impressions of these trees, so they're a bit like triangles in their simplest form, you know, so narrow at the top and wider at the bottom. So you're just wanting to add that in with the finger trip. Just that idea, just that impression of conifers in the hill. So we're wanting also to, of course, capture um, the light, the sense of light in this scene, um, with, with, the, with the chinks of light coming through the sky. Um, the trees are going to be illuminated somewhat, some the tops of the trees, so we're going to just highlight some parts of the trees with the yellow ochre and white. And the light's also going to catch on the mountain as well. Just little bits of highlight. And I talked earlier about the uh, the pinkish tones of the quartzite stone. Um, so I think we're going to just emphasize that a little as well. So mixing up some, some red, white, and a little bit of yellow ochre, just to add that in. And a little bit more highlight just in the, uh, in the foreground. So I'm going to be using a palette knife for this next part. I don't know if any of you have seen a palette knife before, but I would use a palette knife quite a lot in my work. Um, if you don't have one, don't worry. Perhaps just use a pen, a fine marker, or a fine paintbrush uh, to, kind of, to achieve the effect that I'm going after here today. But I'm going to use just the edge of the knife. I'm going to load that with paint, and that's what I'm going to use to make some marks on the canvas to define certain parts of the canvas, as I say, to define the watered edge and some contours of the land. So taking some burnt umber, brown, and ultramarine blue, I'm going to mix that with the knife, with the edge of the knife. So not creating black, but creating sort of a very dark brown. And you just I'm going to use the knife to define the water's edge here, just the side of the knife like this. Just taking my fingertip again to even it all out. And another tip that I picked up years ago, you know, when you're painting still water, a few horizontal lines um, can, can help create the effect of that still calming water. Then on top of these dark lines, we want to just put a few strokes of white, just where the light catches the water.
there we are folks, my finished interpretation of Erigo and Counting on Evolve. So I appreciate this has been a very different lesson to the previous ones where we've explored my contemporary style which uses bold, vibrant colour. Um, in, this, in this session we have taken sort of direct inspiration from the colours within the landscape and used more naturalistic colours. Uh, we've used an impressionistic style also to capture the ever-changing light uh, and the movement that that creates within the landscape. Uh, also the big thing in this session you'll appreciate has been the use of the hands and the fingertips to paint. I personally find it a very liberating way to work and I hope that you enjoyed experimenting with that too. And before I go I just want to remind you about the giant collaborative art project that I've been getting off the ground during lockdown. I know many of you have been using art to transport yourselves to your favourite places during lockdown and uh, I would love for as many of you as possible to contribute to the project. So the idea is if you could paint your favourite place onto a piece of hexagonal paper or card and send it to me. I'm going to piece them all together to create one huge art piece for public display. And please feel free to take on board the tips uh, and the lessons that you've learned over the past few weeks uh, through these online courses. So if you could put your pieces in an envelope and send them to my studio uh, to Adrian Margie, 99 Mark Street, Portrush, BT 56 8 BU. I'll really look forward to receiving them. Alright, take care and until next time, happy painting.